Good morning. morning. Our lives are frequently grounded in identity, the ourself. But our identity, the pursuit, should be grounded in our place as beloved children of God. Hear these words from the 73rd Psalm. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply until I entered the sanctuary of God, and then I understood their final destiny. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen. the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. And so the father divided up the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property and dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. The son would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to himself at last, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off, and he went to his father. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. you to be seated and to open your hearts and your minds to the one that we call love, the one we call God, as we invite God to be present with us. Let us pray. Beloved and Holy One, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful that we are here and that we are grounded in your presence. We're grateful for the word that transcends history and brings to us an understanding of the ways in which you move and have your being. 
We're grateful now that as we gather, we have sung and prayed and now engage in your word, a word that transforms us, liberates us, offers us hope, not just for today, but for tomorrow. So embrace us in that vision, in your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Embrace us as co-workers with you, that we might seek your will, the way, the truth, and the life. And with that, God, I pray now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're five weeks into our season of Lent, and here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we've taken this particular season in preparation for Holy Week and for Easter, uh, we've taken the opportunity to have our own moment of reflection and prayer uh, through our small groups and through the reading of the book that many of us have been reading a way other than our own. Uh, We've been thinking seriously about making this Lent different and not the ways of the world, but the ways of Jesus, following in the ways, the footsteps of Jesus, understanding that pain and suffering and the ways of the world are not always the ways of God, that you and I are called to a season of transformation. In fact, the whole notion of Christianity as a way of life, as a, a way of being, is really about transformation. It's about transforming our hearts, our minds, our very being into the ways of Jesus. And for those of us who are on that journey, uh, we seek out opportunities every single day of our lives to find ways in which we might grow and question and change, to be more Christ-like in all of our ways. That's the purpose of this thing we call Christianity. And each and every one of us, wherever we are on that journey, wherever we are on life's journey, we come to worship predominantly on Sunday to acknowledge that we are attempting to be better. We are trying to be a better people. And the values that we see in Jesus are those values that we get to embody ourselves. That's why we call ourselves co-creators with God. God is not finished with us. God is still speaking. God is still moving And each and every one of us are symbols of that hope for the world. Our Lenten journey continues until we get to Holy Week and then ultimately to Easter. And then ultimately to beyond Easter where we'll celebrate Pentecost and all the great festivities. And then we'll do it all over again as we start with Advent and Christmas, but we're not quite there yet. (laughs) Don't worry, we're not trying to rush through the year just too quickly. But we come in this Lenten season to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves in order that we might come more fully to our authenticity, to the journey that we are on. Today's scripture reading is perhaps a familiar story to you, and for many of us it may be more familiar because I preached on this just a few weeks ago. And the story of the prodigal son, the one who gathered all of his possessions from his father and traveled off to squander his living and then ultimately found himself desolate, found himself without anything. It's a story that is so familiar to many of us. But today, I want to take a little different look at the story. In fact, I want to take it to the very end of the story When the young man has already received his inheritance, he's gone off, he's squandered it all, he's done everything that he can with the possessions that he's been given. He finds himself without anything. And then the scripture says, he came unto himself. There was an aha moment perhaps for him in this journey uh, that he was probably better off where he was. Knowing that he could never go back to where he was in the same way that he distanced himself, but that he was coming unto himself, coming to his own, coming to the fullness of his own reality, his situation, the disconnection perhaps between the life that he once knew and the life that he found himself in. And it says that in those moments of decision, in that moment of aha, that moment where he came unto himself, the fullness of the reality of who he was, that he then sought his way back. 
his way back to the Father, his way back to his community. And we take this so often as this literal experience of going back to his Father, but the truth is perhaps that what he finally came to the realization was that in his fullness of his authenticity, he had something to offer in his journey back. Those of us who have been on a journey in our own Christian experience know what it's like to be distanced from community. We know what it's like to be distanced from people of faith. We know what it's like to have been perhaps even kicked out from places of faith. And we have been on a journey, many of us, just like this prodigal child, to finally come unto ourselves. To come to that place where we realize just who we are and that God created us just the way that we are and that we are fully coming into our own. In fact, the theme coming to our own was the theme of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ as it began building this incredible cathedral. Coming to our own, a fuller understanding that God had called Cathedral of Hope for a specific time and for a specific purpose for those who were disenfranchised by the Christian church. Those who had been kicked out, shoved out, excluded, excommunicated, in whichever way we found ourselves excluded from Christian community. And Cathedral of Hope believed, had the audacity to believe, stood up to believe, that actually coming into our fullness, coming to our own, coming to the realization of who we are in all of our fullness would send us on a journey that would change Christianity for good, would change the world. But we had to go on the journey. We had to take our toys and go somewhere else, if you will, to find and to come into our fullness to come into the reality of who God has created us to be, not as a mistake, but as full citizens and children of a liberating God who expected us to do something different. It's one of the great things about congregations like Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ and others like us, that for many of us we've had to do that hard work of reconciling who we are to the six clobber passages that are so often used against God's LGBTQ plus people. And to find within that a richness, a richness of what it means to truly be a beloved child of God. Not a mistake, but fullness in our reality. It's almost the story of the prodigal son being welcomed home being welcomed into the fullness, discovering just who he was, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But coming to the fullness of his reality, not to be excluded, but to be fully included. I've had an extraordinary, interesting week here at Cathedral of Hope, and certainly in the city of Dallas. On Monday, many of us got on a bus and went down to Austin, Texas, to the state legislator to speak up specifically against the 85 bills that have now been posted that are anti-LGBTQ plus in this session. And I'm grateful to the six buses that went from the three different areas, two from Cathedral of Hope with Equality Texas, and took our folks down there to be able to speak as words of faith, as liberators of the gospel, and to speak to our legislators about the inherent wrongness of using the law to stand against LGBTQ plus people and others but the ways in which they seem to be insistent on eradicating and taking away the rights of those in our community who are full citizens and who are using language of faith, hijacking the language of faith to say that somehow God has stepsons and daughters and siblings and that somehow some people are included and some people are not included. I want to honor those who went to Austin, Texas this week. Would you give them a sense of appreciation this morning? You see, I tell people all the time that we're in the work of social justice, not in spite of our faith, but because of our faith. Because the gospel dictates us 
to speak up for the marginalized and the disenfranchised and those who are excluded. On Tuesday, I was invited with about 45 leaders in the city to a closed meeting organized by Christians Against Christian Nationalism. And I've had several of you ask, what, what on earth is Christian nationalism and how do we stand against that? I tell people all the time that we stand against Christian nationalism in this country. Patriotism is one thing, but nationalism is something very different. The Christian nationalism is a, a, a work of, of those with power, predominantly, let's be honest, white people who have some fragility about their whiteness in a world that is becoming multicultural and pluralistic, who have some fear about giving up or losing their power, and with an agenda not only to eradicate books from libraries and from schools that will tell the true history, a critical race theory of LGBT people in history, of the rights and roles of women in society, with their whole agenda to make America a Christian country and rewriting history to say that the, those who founded the country intended for America to be Christian. I say that we stand against that, that the freedom of religion in this country is something that is imperative, and if we don't stand for the freedom of religion, believe me, friends, there will be a time where they will try to close down Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ and take away our right to find religion and worship as a part of who that we are. So we stand against that. We know what it's like to be excluded. We know what it's like to have to fight for our right to be called children of God. We stand together this day as we met with those 45 leaders of our city. You know what really surprised me about the leaders of those who were gathered in that room that day? There were only five of us that identified as LGBT. And 40 of them identified somewhere on the spectrum of what we would say straight, but not narrow. It was an incredible moment to stand with our allies and to hear, not that, they are, not that they are necessarily there because of the LGBTQ plus issue, but because they could no longer sit in spaces that stand against or speak, uh, speak against God's LGBT people who, 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 who forge a right to remove women's rights to choose and who use the political system to somehow infringe a Christian value that is not contained in our sacred text, hijacking the same ways in which those people, those folks have, have hijacked the, the, the sense of spirituality, perhaps that would even call us back to something different. Incredible to hear them, many of those who have perhaps one foot in the church or those who have actually left the church altogether. Most interesting conversation I had on Tuesday was with a Southern Baptist guy, older white guy, who had been a former youth pastor in his congregation in Arlington. And he said, I'm just about holding on. And I'm just about holding on because I keep hearing rhetoric from the pulpit every single Sunday that says that God hates certain groups of people. He said, I find nothing in my sacred text that says anything about God's hatred. In fact, all I find in my sacred text is that God is love, and love is God, and where love is, there is God. And how have we perverted the text of the words of Jesus? He said, I'm holding on. There are other folks that have just said, I've given up on institutional Christianity. I've given up completely. And I'm just finding myself spiritual and not religious. Friends, that's the landscape we live in right now. That's the landscape that we find ourselves in. In fact, a recent survey of those who have actually left churches, I'm sure if you've been employed somewhere, you've left a job, they give you an exit interview. They gave some exit interviews to Christians who have left the church. 25% of people who have left the church have left because of LGBTQ plus issues and the way the church treats God's LGBT people. 
Friends, that should be good news for us. Not good news that they're leaving the church, but good news that Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ was founded 53 years for such a time as this to welcome back people who are disenfranchised by the institution that continue to use and corrupt the sacred text for their own means, to a congregation that we're not perfect. We've got our fables and faubles. We have brain farts. (laughs) But at least we know what it's like. Just like the prodigal son to find his way back to come unto his own and to find himself. To be able to fall into the fullness of his his own authenticity and to find a way back. I invited those folks who were at the meeting to come back to Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. And whilst I understand that for many there is some PTSD involved in coming back to a church, no matter what kind of church, I believe that the hard work that many of us have had to do in reconciling our faith to those who would tell us that we do not deserve to have a faith serves as a model for so many who are trying to hold on to this understanding that God is love and love is God. Last evening, I was invited to a group. I thought it was a social event, and I should be wiser than that, but I'm not. It was a social event at a friend of mine's home. His name is Obed, and he invited me to a kinship group. I thought that was just radical inclusion, not to use the word king, as in a kingdom or something, and I thought it was a kinship group. And so I went to the the group last night only to discover that the kinship group was a group of LGBTQ plus Seventh-day Adventists. Who knew? (laughs) So I show up with my bottle of wine. (laughs) Hi, did. (laughs) Don't worry, they do drink. They're not like Mormons. But uh, it was a a very interesting evening of meeting with many Seventh-day Adventists who have either already left the church, been kicked out of the church, been disfellowshipped, but still want to hold on to what it means to be a person of faith. Friends, we are surrounded by people who are looking for community, who are looking to reconcile their own sense of personhood. They're coming to their own. They're coming to their fullness. And Cathedral of Hope and places like us have this unique opportunity to bring renewal and revival to the church of Jesus Christ. In fact, I believe that renewal and revival is going to come from God's queer people. And when I use the word queer, I want to be very specific here. When I use the word queer, I mean it as those who will stand against dominant culture. Those who will stand against this notion that somehow God has some favorites and that God loves some people and not others. And I believe that there are many heterosexual folks who are hungry for the good news of Jesus Christ, that Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, can do because we have been there, done that, worn the t-shirt, and we are back. We are taking our place at the table, and no one can take it away from us. It's the gift that we offer. It is the gift of the prodigal child, the one who is looking to come back And to bring into their lives the fullness of their authenticity, the fullness of their journey, the fullness of who they have been created to be. Because once you challenge one thing, you have to challenge everything else. People ask me over and over again, why do I stay in the church? I stay in the church because I love Jesus. I stay in the church because I believe the church needs me. I stay in the church because my journey, my authenticity is a gift that I offer to the church. 
It's not a thorn in its side. I invite us all to seek our place at the table, not waiting for the church to give us permission, but to take our chair, because we don't have pews anymore, (laughs) to take our chair and drag it to the table so that we can no longer be excluded from those places of sacredness. For those who gathered on Tuesday, Christians against Christian nationalism, for those who gathered last evening in kinship, desperately wanting community, wanting a place where they could feel the love of God, for those who are tired and weary of having to fight church politics and no longer believing that they can stay in spaces where they disagree with those who stand next to them and they are told that if they don't agree with them, they need to leave. For those, Cathedral of Hope offers this prodigal son story. To come into your fullness, to come into the authenticity of who you are and dare to believe and know that you are a child of God, just as you are. And welcome home, to come back to places like us, that are desperately trying to live out what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Not necessarily a Christian with all of the explanations of what that means, but a follower of Jesus and God's love. Now last week, Reverend Dr. Andrea Davis included music in her sermon. Grateful. I have a video. My name is Susan, and I'm transgender. I'm loved. I'm a real person. I'm worthy of dignity and respect. I'm strong. I'm resilient. I'm beautiful. I have a right to exist. I am a human being. I am a child of God. My name is Anthony, and I am a transgender person. I am loved. I am worthy of dignity and respect. I am strong. I am resilient. I am handsome. I have the right to exist. I am a human being. I am a child of God. من مرسد هستم یک ترانسجندر هستم خودم خیلی دوست دارم من یه شخص واقعیم خیلی قویم خیلی خوشگلم من حق زندگی دارم و من قطعی از وجود خداوند هستم مرسی My name is Mercedes and I am a transgender person I'm loved and I'm a real person I'm strong and I'm beautiful I have a right to exist. I am a human being. I am a child of God. My name is Seth and I am a transgender person. I am loved. I am a real person. I am worthy of dignity and respect. I am strong. I am resilient. I'm handsome. I have a right to exist. I am a human being. I am a child of God. My name is Michelle and I am a transgender person. I am loved. I am a real person. I'm worthy of dignity and respect. I am strong, I am resilient, I am beautiful, and I have a right to exist. I am a human being, I am a child of God. I am 
a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child a child of God. I am 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 a child of God. May we all be able to echo those words this day and every day. No matter who we are, you, I, am a child of God. Amen.
now under God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us, every one of us is given. And may the blessing of God known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.